Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the finance internship talks. Uh, I hope you guys get a lot of insights out of today's discussion. And uh, I would like to begin uh, today's talk with a brief introduction uh, of our panelists. So today, uh, we are uh, really happy to have uh, Mr. Rishav Raj. Uh, he, he did his PS in uh, Nomura and JPMS and uh, uh, in the role of global markets. Then we have Mr. Uh, Dash Gupta, who has interned at JPMS uh, in the role of GRNC quantitative research. We have with us Mr. Parth, but, uh, but with the uh, who interned at JPMS, uh, the role was CIB R&D banking, and uh, we have Mr. Rahul Sundareshwaram uh, at the uh, Nomura station and uh, in the role of fintech. So. Uh, Thank you all for uh, coming uh, to today's talk. Uh, Bishop, we can begin uh, with your uh, uh, part. So sure. please uh, you present your slides. Yeah, I'll present my screen. Yeah. OK, can, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay, I'll just show right. So, uh, like, I'll talk about uh, like my roles that I had. Like, so first of all, I entered in the like interned in the first semester of last year, like last academic year in uh, Nomura, uh, like in the global markets division. So there I was a part of the uh, business resource management team, and within that, the uh, CVA trading Asia team. So like my team comprise uh, comprised of uh, trading desk which like, so the role of basically that team was, they had trading books based out of Korean, Korea. And so we had to like monitor those trading risks, uh, hedge any risks that were there and uh, basically monitor the overall market so that uh, we have, we can make a profitable, uh, profitable quarter or profitable year. So that was one of the sections. Then uh, as it, its name is business resource management. So we also had uh, a lot of work around like how to optimize the books or how to like make better decisions and all. So for that, there was a, some uh, like compressions and all that were happening around like just uh, like they, they, they might seem like fancy words to you, but like it's uh, just basically management of the trading books in a way to optimize the approach. And then uh, like aside from that, I worked on a couple of automation projects there. So for that, uh, I used Python and SQL like for the first, uh, I think first month and first couple of months. So that was also a part of my project. And so I can see the uh, tools that were useful that would be useful, I think, in anywhere you intern right now, even in finance, will be if you know a little bit of Python and SQL, because most of the, these firms are like aiming at uh, transforming their originally existing VBA models into Python. So they are looking for people uh, who have a little knowledge about this. Even if you don't, it's totally fine. But if you have, it gives you a little edge over other people. And the PPO chances, I'll say in this, like within this team, they were good, like chances were good. They have a highlighted medium because like uh, it totally depends upon whether uh, you'll be able to, uh, there'll be opening or openings or not within the team. So if there are openings, so they will be happy to offer if you fit in uh, well with the team. So that depends on the scenario, but yeah, their chances are good. And they even try to uh, like put you within, like within Nomura, like as a whole, if, even if you don't have uh, openings within the team, they try to, I put it in global markets or any other branch like global risk or like any any where there is an opening and uh, you suit the role. So next on moving forward. So in the second semester, like this semester, I was uh, working with the process strategy team as a part of uh, wholesale credit solutions. So uh, like first of all, I'll talk about a little about JP Morgan. So like JP Morgan uh, roles that you all see in your uh, preference list. So most of the roles, they, they have like uh, dived down deep and like presented only the specific teams that you'll be joining. So that's why you might be might be seeing like 30 roles of JP Morgan, but only like six, seven roles of Neomira. So that is the main reason around that. Uh, like within uh, Neomira, there are many, like within global markets, there are like tens of 10, 10, 20 teams within that. So it's a very big division. So they don't uh, send in the bifurcations along with the role. But here in JP Morgan, they like ask for a specific roles. That is the only the process dependency that doesn't matter that much, but uh, that's just an approach that you should keep in mind, like while filling. 
so uh, i'll talk about little my role so my role uh, is more of a product role and uh, it involved like uh, project management of some of the upcoming projects transformation projects that the firm has so like uh, my team is uh, based out of the credit risk division so we work at transformation projects within the credit divisions as in a way to basically make the firm more competitive and like uh, like a counter on the fintechs or whatever the growing disruptors are in the market that is a little bit about my role and the tools here is not more of rishabh bhai i'm i'm really sorry to interrupt in between yeah, yeah. but are you changing the slides yeah yeah i am, I am, I am. are you not able to okay no okay. no i mean okay let me again present it then i'm just uh... now are you able to yeah 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 okay uh, so to keep it to this as well so that you are able to see so this was about numera so okay i i, I guess i've talked about it so now about this so uh, the tools that um, mainly were useful here so this is not that much uh, like here they they not automation projects any, anymore so like for that uh, you only need basic excel, uh, like excel knowledge and like sql is obviously like useful because like to fetch any data from database you need sql so that is obviously a helpful skill to have and then there's some project management tool which is like totally fine if you don't know like i also didn't know about it and that's not a very big deal to learn you can like work on the job and learn on the job so about the ppo chances the ppo chances are also like uh, good uh, within this division and within this team because they are they were hiring as of now and again as i talked about in nomura it totally depends upon whether there is a vacancy within the team or not so you can't totally like expect that because i am saying or anyone is saying that ppo chances are good and you'll go there and you can get it but uh, like it depends upon the situation but uh, as in nomura they also try like jp morgan also tries to put you within the uh, within within the firm somewhere like if if they are not able to offer you in the same team so that's my take on uh, like both of these and to just answer few begin question that people are people have uh, like asked me uh, in the like last couple of weeks so like is switching ps stations beneficial so like uh, this depends upon what your aim is what your career aim is if you uh, let's say if you are a double uh, dual ps dual ps student and you want to maximize your opportunity and you worked for first semester in a, in a firm or in a role that you like you know that that's a good that there will be a good pay off you might get a ppo but you're not very sure about that you want to do this in your future or you see yourself doing this for the next 2 years 3 years whatever so if that is the case then like you can think about switching it uh, but again there is a risk and reward in this case as well like it might be that you switch from one firm and you're not able to get the firm that you desire so it it, it must should be a calculated risk there is a upside and downside to like both of this and like having two companies on your resume uh doesn't matter that much as much as the overall experience so if you work in a in a single firm for 12 months that is equivalent to like doing 6 months internship in two firms so that doesn't matter because all all of these firms like the big banks are very big names on your resume so it doesn't matter that whether you are you have two or you only have one for 12 months and the work culture is a little different because one is a japanese firm nomura is a japanese firm and like jp morgan you all know is a us based firm so there's a little difference uh, as people are more uh, you can say uh, as aligned to the japanese culture like they're more you can say uh, more in uh, more stringent in their approach might be like not a, not a very good word to use but like uh, there there's a little more freedom that i experience in jp morgan it just might be my personal take but like work culture aside from the culture that i'm talking about the overall team culture and all is very very good in both both of these firms and uh, you will be definitely enjoy your teammates and everyone there working there they are very smart people and you'll get to know a lot learn a lot or not so uh, like work culture wise both are very 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 uh, like different as but uh, a little different but uh, like overall they are very good to work at yeah that's all from my side as of now Uh, thank you, Maya. Uh, that was a really insightful talk, and uh, we do have a few audience questions. However, uh, if it's all right, we can can we take them towards the end of the talk? We can collect all the questions and take them all at once. Yeah, yeah, that will be fine. All right, great. 
and uh, to the audience uh, if you guys have any uh, any more questions uh, you can please drop it in the uh, chat box in the youtube live stream and we will uh, ask those questions uh, towards the end uh, so once again thank you bhaiya uh, moving on we have uh, dr bhaiya uh, you can please present your screen and uh, we will thank you guys for inviting me today to deliver the talk and welcome everyone for logging into a sunday evening uh, i am presenting my screen uh, just let me know when it's visible oh uh, yeah your screen is visible i'll be just changing the slide and let me know if you are seeing this yeah yeah the slides are changing uh i'll start so i was working in jp morgan uh in the quantitative research uh for the past one year uh i'll be covering majorly about quantitative research and other profiles as well so the major question that you all had was how to fill the preferences so uh one thing is if you like a role you like some team you are enthusiastic about it go for it there is no question if the role is considered good or uh not that good uh, generally among your friends as a rule of thumb uh, i'd like to give some points mumbai is generally considered a office more towards business bangalore and hyderabad are considered back and tech offices there are some profiles uh, that involve some reporting and risk work so generally these work are these these profiles are considered as uh the back office profiles uh, i would suggest if you are interested in them uh, take up some of the risk profiles the strategy ones rather than the credit risk reporting and the middle office because that would be a more ops kind of role modeling uh, profiles quantitative research data science sales and structuring trading and wholesale credit roles these are uh, some great profiles that jp morgan has to offer and the uh, work done is also very cutting edge and it will really uh, be insightful and you learn a lot of things if you are keen on the the like the cliched investment banking role uh, the crg one is for you to look at so basically all these roles majorly all the roles are from the investment banking uh, line of business but investment banking is a very you know, huge business uh, with underwriting the mna part the capital markets part so like consider these all as part of the investment banking uh, business now there are some of the lo uh, ccb roles that chase consumer banking so these are the roles in the consumer banking like the home loans division or some credit credit card division so these roles will be not not would be to the uh, investment banking side but to the consumer banking side like the banks we have in our vicinity so if something like this interests you then you should pro probably put this up uh, on the preference so the relevant courses cg cutoff and offshoot uh, this uh, these things are asked and answered a couple of times so finance courses like drm sapm fini cs courses like oop dbs ml these would be uh, uh, helpful but you can pick the things uh, on job also it's uh, nothing that will impediment you cg cut off and offshoot nobody really knows uh, what will it go because which profile the people like this time or not it will totally depend on that so what you can do before the internship starts before the inter internship start you can see for uh, your some of your team member if you can find him on linkedin ping him and ask him like what are the roles uh, what does the team do uh, what uh, will be the things i am involved in you can uh, gain some perspective from them for qr and some other roles you can uh, take up a course or brush up your skills on python some teams use c++ as well uh, you should also learn about excel uh, like intermediate skills uh, like we look up pivot tables these come in handy when you have to get the work done quickly some roles may require sql to uh, as mentioned by rishav quantitative research yeah uh, you can consider like uh, if you want to put it into the basket of front office back office or something like that you can consider it as a front office without client engagement qr globally does not have any client engagement so there are a quite a lot of teams uh, that are in, under quantitative research i believe there are 10 or teams uh, the major uh, divisions are equities commodities rates systematic trading spreads and modeling 
teams. I was part of the investable indices team uh, that uh, is responsible globally for give uh, for the tradable indices uh, that the clients require. Our clients could be ranging from some uh, financial, uh, some uh, hedge funds to some pension funds to some banks or anybody. Uh, all the teams uh, in QR directly support the trading trading desks globally. Those are the guys that are actually executing the trades, uh, talking to the clients and all, getting the business actually. Uh, you are not considered as an intern in QR. You get to own your work. You are uh, you are given quality projects to work on. Kind of work you can expect in uh, QR. Uh, that's the next thing that a lot of people have doubts about. So. Not specifically to QR, but in the other teams as well, you can expect something on the lines of automation initially, like uh, like the period. Some there are some periodic reports that every team has to send, so automating those reports uh, that are currently manual, developing some UI or some dashboard for uh, quick access of things, the business as usual work that the team gets on on a periodic basis. Support work like fixing of errors that you have already uh, some some product or some thing that you have already given it to, into production to the uh, downstream users to use the traders structures and all. So you are expected to fix some errors if something comes out in between migration of some of the existing things into let's say you want to go from Python two to Python three or internally use some version of a software then you need to migrate it to. The other, so there's a lot. This is some work on this, and other work on the enhancements and modifications on the products that you have already delivered. And the last is the core work that the team supports. This will be depending on the things. You are not expected to pitch into all these things, all these uh, points mentioned when you start the internship. You your load will be gradually increased, and it's manageable. You can you can just communicate with the manager. Uh, if you are feeling overwhelmed or you are not able to make a good balance, uh, they are pretty chill and pretty uh, in uh, like they're pretty helpful. If you say you are not able to cope up to such work or you need a you you don't have that much bandwidth, you can communicate it and they will be some other resourcing. So the general tips uh, that I would be uh, like to give uh, you are firstly, if you ask anybody for help. You should uh, try to figure out the thing on your own and just reach out to the person that you are facing this issue and you have tried this, this, this. Just don't expect a lot of hand holding. Don't commit to a timeline that you are not sure of. You have to be absolutely uh, certain about this, especially to the downstream users and the counterparts because if you commit to something, you have to deliver it at any cost. Try to make your work error free because if you uh, because all the work is linked, uh, your work goes into some other team's work and then if there is an issue, then it uh, translates into a pretty big problem and it will involve a lot of uh, uh, things uh, coming back to you, uh, the support thing. Be proactive in taking up work because you have to be a little pushy. You have to like ping your manager about the progress, the update, and ask for more work if you are feeling that you have a bandwidth for more work that you want to do. So you need to push uh, a little bit uh, to a manager. Should you have a one on one call? This is very important that some of my seniors also told me. Apart from the usual weekly or daily catch up or stand up that you have, in, uh, that you will have in your team. Just keep an hour uh, or 30 minutes of month with your manager to get the feedback, to get the improvements uh, on and like just a usual catch up. Uh, nothing uh, like there's no agenda as such, just uh, generic things. Uh, apart from the work you do, you need to also showcase it, present it, but with caution, don't be, uh, don't do, too much, do that too much. Uh, the PPO, next I'll uh, take up the PPO chances. So conversion in the previous SEM, your like this job had, this role had given a PPO for consistently for five years, doesn't mean it will give it this time too. So like all the things that are going on currently, you, sh uh, you should take them with a pause. So PPO depends on the vacancy in the team. This is one, this is the major factor because 
the Gen Bitsian is uh, quite capable enough to deliver the work uh, given out to him. The PPUs are usually rolled out in May 2022 for you guys. So single degree guys, uh, you could prefer SEM2 because you will be there. So there will be a benefit for immediate joining for you guys. So, uh, this this like this will sound to you a little bit uh, odd, but company also wants to retain you as badly as you want a job with them. Try to be a good fit in the team, uh, like gel in with the uh, guys, uh, talk to them, uh, because in the end, if there's no vacancy in your team and your manager or your team likes you, they will definitely try to find some vacancy in the other teams for you. Uh, it is also important for you to mention to your manager that you are looking for a PPO because a lot of my friends also didn't mention uh, it to the manager and there was some communication gap there and the manager thought they are not interested and later it had some consequences. JP Morgan conversion rates are quite good and consistent. So you, you can believe there are like there are good chances for you to get a PPO here. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Bhaiya. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bhaiya. Uh, I'm sure that our audience find, found the insights you shared extremely informative and uh, it will surely help them. Uh, moving on, uh, we now have Parth Bhaiya uh, screen and uh, we can uh, start your, your second talk. Okay, I'll start now. Uh, am I audible? Was yeah. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'll just start presenting my screen. This one minute. Okay. So my inter my TA station was JPM CIB RNA banking, which uh, is the other name for which is CRG. So let's begin. So this is the structure of JP Morgan's corporate and investment bank. So JP Morgan's uh, bank is structured in three, uh, so it's office structure divided in three parts. There's the front office, middle office, and back office. So CRG is part of the middle office. So now the difference, uh, the difference between a front office, middle office, and back office lies mainly in the terms of client interaction. Front, a front office will have extensive client interaction. They'll be part of the deal, while middle office won't have a lot of, won't actually won't have client interaction, but it, they can be on the deal team, but they won't be listed on it. Now the back office, there will be no client interactions and you'll only support. Like for example, you'll be asked to make a PPT or some changes and that's it, that's it for back office. So within CRG, uh, your, the teams are divided into like CRG is a huge division. There are 400 people in CRG. It's, uh, it's like a huge division within JP Morgan Investment Banking. So we support all the teams across the world. For example, JP Morgan's Investment Bank is divided into three geographies, which are, uh, which are North America, uh, EMEA and APAC. There's also LATAM, but that's split completely else. So these are the three geographies that CRG covers, and within those, once you join as an intern, you assign one of the uh, either a product team or an industry coverage team. So a product team. Uh, so if you look at what an investment bank provides, an investment bank can provide a lot of solutions. So basically, we provide solutions. So in terms of solutions, they can be anything. For example, you want let's say you want to conduct an IPO, so you would go to an ECM team. If you want to conduct a, if you want to raise uh, money through bonds, a DCM would help you out. If you want to buy out another company, MA would help out. So different types of products. So uh, the product teams help out in different types of uh, well transaction, as I mentioned. But industry coverage teams sort of help out in giving the overall background. For example, if you are doing a deal, what numbers make sense? What uh, what sort of transaction should take place? So that sort of perspective is provided by industry teams. So if you when you are in CIG you are assigned either a product team or an industry coverage team in either of the geographies. For example, if you're assigned a station, it can be, for example, in my case, it was DIT Australia, which is Diversified Industrials Australia coverage. So uh, this is the structure that JP Morgan's Investment Bank has. So what do interns do in CRG? So interns have basically two major functions. The three major function, uh, functions one could say. CRG basically provides a lot of marketing material. See, uh, so interns in CRG work on marketing material. So marketing material is when a company is pitched something or when any uh, other entity is pitched an idea, you need a ton of material. So for example, the PPTs, the, the models and stuff. So this is one of the marketing material. 
So CRG interns help in, pre uh, in preparing the marketing material. For example, you can have pitch books. For example, these are industry trends. This is how the company could position itself. This is how this uh, this company could acquire this company. And this, this is why it makes sense. So these are the pitch books which CRG interns have been preparing. Now, you won't prepare the entire pitch book. You'll prepare parts of it. For example, you'll be given, let's say, uh, a certain section of it. For example, you'll be asked to prepare uh, uh, transaction comps or, or uh, trading comps. So you'll be asked to prepare certain portions of the book, which can be ten slides, which can be five slides, six slides, out of a thirty-page book. Apart from that, within CRG, you built, you sort of update and maintain financial models. So there are a huge range of financial models that uh, investment bank has. For every company, we maintain financial models. For every sector, we maintain financial models. So basically, you update and maintain these financial models, and you provide research on an ad hoc basis. Like for example. Your team senior, let's say he needs research on, let's say this company conducted an IPO on this date. Uh, find me what the terms were. For example, what the price it got listed on, how many shares were offered, and everything. So it could be this, or other it could be, for example, this. Uh, what are this? What is this company's asset distribution geographically? So give me the breakdown and stuff. It could be really anything, but the work can be divided into these three sort of chunks. Apart from that, the full-time analysts work on other projects in the team. They assist the front office in creating uh, deal transaction models, and they also work on deal executions. So overall, this is the done uh, work done by CIG interns. Now, this is at this can be very monotonous. This can be interpreted in two ways. So uh, this can be monotonous to some people. Otherwise, it can be very interesting to some people. So for example, if you're preparing a book, so within a sector, you can prepare a book for multiple companies. So you keep learning a lot of things. For example, if A company uh, has this dynamics, B company has these dynamics, you keep learning about those. These are the financial models. These are the metrics that these companies have. You keep learning about them. So for some people, it can be monotonous. Some people, it can be very interesting. So it depends. So this is the work that is done by uh, interns in CIG. Now, this, is very, this work has significant impact. So the work that is done here goes directly to the front office teams. Front office teams then sort of tweak it and send it to clients directly. So it's a very high, uh, so it's a pretty high impact work. So within CRG, uh, so what would be the best practices for you uh, before joining, uh, if you are considering CRG? So here in innocent banking, you don't really need a ton of skills. For example, if you are doing QR, you would need a considerable uh, in-point research. You would need a considerable amount of other, uh, let's say, uh, coding skills and stuff. In CRG, you don't really need a lot of coding skills. You just need basic, you need, pretty good, you need to be pretty good in Excel, and you need to be pretty good in PowerPoint. And you need to know your basics in accounting and, and other finance concepts. Now the good thing about CRG is they take training pretty seriously. You'll have a week, uh, you'll have almost two weeks of training, so you don't need to worry about if you don't know something. They will train you on everything. You don't need to worry about if you don't know any databases or something. All uh, everyone is assigned a certain set of databases which they're trained for. Two weeks of general standard training and one one and a half weeks of in, of your desk specific training takes place. So you don't really need to worry about anything that you are not uh, that you don't know this software, you don't know this anything. You will be trained. All you need to do is brush up your accounting, uh, accounting concepts, go up, read up fund of end, and go up, read up, uh, just do a revision of that. And maybe your SAP and FinMan concepts, that should be about it. Apart from that, you could uh, brush up the basics of investment banking, how the industry functions, what services are provided, who are, what, are, what were the recent transactions. Then apart from that, you could just reach out to seniors in CIG to ask about what their functions are. So in, seniors are usually the best sort of info, so, uh, source of knowledge on any term, in investment banking in particular. Apart from that, now this is a very notorious thing in investment banking, which is true. Now, CRG is not a front office. It's a middle office, but its work hours are still very long. Now, work hours are very dependent on which desk you get. So as I mentioned, there are geographies, there are different industries or products which they cover, and each of them has a separate desk. Now, the amount of work hours which you spend are variable depending on how much the deal flow is, like how many transactions are coming your way. So you'll have a few desks which work regularly 15 hours a day. For example, you can have desks. Uh, for example, I worked at a desk where my usual time to log in was around, I logged in at 9.30 and my usual login time was 10.30 PM. Uh, that was on a normal day. Apart from, uh, apart from that, on a bad day, it would be 12.30 PM and on a very horrible day, it would be 3 AM. So yes, you can have desks like that, but you can have very chill desks also. Like the current desk I'm on, I log in at 9, 9, 9.30 AM and I log off at 7 PM. So it's a very chill, on a good day, on a bad day, it's 11.30. So your working hours are pretty long. So if you're considering working in, CR, in CRG, you need a comfortable working environment. So that is a very, it's a very pro tip. Now, the do's and don'ts of CRG. 
Now, JPM will provide an insane amount of resources. Now, you'll have training modules on everything. So you can use that, you can keep learning. There'll be continuous training within CRG. You'll have constant webinars, sessions, and everything. You can just, and you just need to log in. You can just dial in and they, are, they get started. So you have to keep learning. You have to ask for more work and exposure. So your analysts are extremely busy on the team, the CRG analysts. They are extremely busy. They like, uh, for example, in your initial work will be bad. It will be full of mistakes and they'll need to go over it. A lot of times they'll spend more time on sort of correcting your mistakes rather than the time they would have spent if they did the work. So uh, you need to keep asking them for more work and more exposure continuously. And simultaneously, you need to learn from your mistakes and avoid repeating them. So you uh, work, the more you keep working and the more you learn from your mistakes, the more sort of complicated or the more interesting your work gets. Initially, what you will do basically is sort of move around logos, maybe sort of pull data from somewhere. But as you as you keep, as sort of they build confidence in you, as the team gets confidence in you, it'll keep giving you more complex tasks. For example, they can tell you to build an entire book. For example, they'll tell you, this is this client they want, like this is the, what the front office is asking. They have a meeting at this this time. They want a book on this. You have to, you are, these are the shells. Like uh, This is what are the basics. Uh, this is what needs to be filled. You have to build 10, 15 pages worth of it. So this is the level of trust that uh, you can achieve. Uh, if you build it, your trust, you can get this sort of work. So these are the best practices within CRG. So speaking of your chances of PPOs, CRG has a pretty good track record of PPOs. So within the past few years, CRG has, in some semesters, CRG has ne had a nearly 100% PPO conversion rate. This year, for example, it was a near 100% conversion rate among those who, who wanted the PPO. As, uh, as was previously mentioned, you have to clearly, clearly state that you want a PPO. JPM wants to retain you. They are uh, JP, uh, there's so much work around, they need people. Like the people are overworked a lot of time. Investment bank, this is very common. People are overworked. So they need people. So if you mention that you want a PPO and you've done decently, you will have your very good shot at landing a PPO here. As I mentioned, it was near 100% this time. Unless it's a unless economic scenario is very bad, like th there are no guarantees, but uh, unless the economic scenario is very bad, the PPO conversion chances here are pretty good. So uh, I guess that's it for me. I'll just write my screen. Um, thank you, Maya. The perspective which you have provided us is uh, undoubtedly going to be extremely helpful for uh, all the people who are watching the talk. Uh, next up, we have Rahul Bhaiya. So uh, you can please uh, begin your talk and present your screen. Sure. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You are audible. Awesome. All right. Um, just let me know if you can see my screen also. Yeah, the screen is visible. Got it. Um, all right. So um, basically, I'll be covering the fintech role that Nomura comes to offer from a PS2 perspective. Um, I'll also try to highlight certain soft points around other roles also to the best of my knowledge. Um, but at the same time, I'd be primarily focusing a lot around fintech because that's the uh, PS session that I was allotted and I've gone through the process. Um, so for the next 10, 15 minutes, this is the flow that I'd be following. Um, I try to give you a very quick overview of the five profiles that come uh, from Nomura's perspective for PS2. Um, and then directly do a deep dive into fintech and what exactly the team does. Um, try to describe the nature of works and the type of projects that we work on. Um, I'll also try to highlight certain softer nuances which might help you in making a decision uh, with respect to um, whether you where exactly do you want to place fintech in your preferences, right? Um, I'll speak about uh, I'll speak a little bit around prerequisites or software requirements, um, and also try to highlight whether uh, this is a right fit for you, right? How do you exactly ascertain whether um, this might be a right fit for you? Considering that it's a niche um, role, right? It's not a very traditional mainstream role. Um, and finally, uh, I try to deviate a little from finance, and um, I I definitely would want to focus on a foot a few tips that definitely worked a lot, uh, worked wonders for me. So would we'll try to highlight those as well. Um, coming to the profile overview, I wouldn't really focus on what exactly Nomura does a lot because I'm pretty sure um, a lot of you might be knowing uh, uh, the functions that Nomura has and it's readily available on the website as well. Um, in terms of the profiles that come into uh, campus, there are five primary profiles. Right? Um, so there's FinTech, uh, Wholesale Strategy, uh, Global Markets, Global Risk and CMT, CMT which is Change Management Team. 
um if i had to segregate these roles fintech and whole street strategy are more around business or strategy core strategy side of things while global markets uh, and global risks are a little around core finance and cmt is a little different ball game around project or program management uh before diving into fintech i'll try to cover very broadly since we don't have other panelists from nomura right uh, for these roles also um global markets was definitely covered by rishab so won't be focusing on that i think that was comprehensive enough um so i'll start with wholesale strategy um, basically wholesale strategy is the corporate strategy arm of nomura which is responsible for furthering the uh, core business agendas of the senior management team right uh, that can be holistically understanding how the current business has been performing uh, how it can be improved and made more efficient are there any new lines of businesses that probably want to venture into any new markets any new client segments that you want to tap into so the team basically is the in-house uh, advisory for a uh, team that defines and executes these a uh, wide range of strategic priorities for the wholesale division um, and wholesale division comprises of the market side basically which is um, the trading desk etc as well as uh, the investment banking team which covers ipos and mnas um global markets uh, the service already covered is definitely a very vast field and is more pertaining towards core economics or finance global risk um, although we don't have a panelist for uh, from nomura for risk um i am pretty sure or at least on a macro level um the risk profiles are similar across different stations uh, be it nomura uh, credit suisse dboi etc right um uh, it's primarily risk management and there are a, a varied type varied types of risk that you would be covering you might be covering market risk uh, financial risk non financial risk which may be operational risk um credit risk etc and finally there's the cmt which is the change management team which is more to do with internal processes uh, how you coordinate with stakeholders to improve uh and like analyze improve and plan on these projects that are uh, executed and making sure that they are more efficient and tracking the risks associated with the same as well um i'll try to now move deep dive i'll do try to do deep dive into fintech um as a role um so as part of the fintech team basically we evaluate what we essentially do is we evaluate fintech opportunities for the firm to venture into now that can be by the means of making strategic investments adopting fintech startups products uh in our lines of businesses or also in some cases making um, an acquisition right um so essentially uh, as an investment bank nomura has both retail clients in japan as well as corporate clients or which might be family offices uh, hnis or uhnis as well as institutional investors uh, that they provide a, a range of solutions for um, and obviously fin fintech is then used to be able to provide better solutions to these clients right um so we and each of these clients would work like would want solutions across varied range of segments um be it like wealth management asset management uh, alternative investments etc so the nature of work what, what what i mean by these opportunities would be these pockets of opportunities or these segments right that um nomura might want to venture into in the future so the nature of work or the type of work basically entails conducting landscaping exercises of each of these segments that you might be working on right um then probably evaluating the types of business models that are operating within these segments sourcing startups uh, preparing company profilers or material that might serve as organic or inorganic targets for the senior management team um, right and then finally obviously also assess the best way in which nomura can tap into this market um there's also a fair bit of peer review exercises that go on because you have to keep an open eye for what exactly are other investment banks doing uh, and do some sort of competitor benchmarking to understand where exactly are we placed right as a firm um in terms of working with global teams there are two teams that the fintech team works with primarily the first is a financial innovation company based out of japan that looks after everything fintech strategic investments um, digital transformation etc and the second is a strategy team based out of singapore um there's also a fair bit of like um, involvement in thought leadership and where you basically as an intern also you're assisting um, senior management in formulating the fintech roadmap uh, that the firm should be having from a uh, aj perspective or a southeast asian region perspective um and then obviously you would be trying to churn out insights and assess them and suggest them the best ways in which they can go over the process um the second part is this is the main part is around fintech strategy the second part is also to do with innovation since we are a part of the larger innovation office uh, responsible for driving internal and external fintech initiatives uh, so we are currently the program management office for external initiatives such as voyager um so if you read up on the internet voyager was a fintech partnership program where multiple start fintech startups were a part of it and like with the assistance of an external consulting firm we conducted due diligence in some of these startups and finally adopted some of these products in the businesses 
um apart from that they're also responsible for driving internal initiatives which would be promoting like innovation within the teams right in the india office as well as in helping building um certain mvps or pocs for business use cases right which might then be further taken up by it teams going forward so all in all on a macro level if i had to say it would be evaluating these pockets of opportunities within the larger financial services ecosystem from a fintech perspective and seeing what is the best way in which nomura can you know assess uh, as is the best way in which nomura can venture into this particular field um i'll cover uh, the i'll cover two parts basically in this slide because i didn't want to have a lot of slides um i try to cover softer nuances over here mention some of them over here as well as some prerequisites of software uh, that you might be using right um so in terms of the type of project or nature of project that you would be working on it is not it's not it's not a role where you'd be working on one project for 6 months right or probably two three projects for 6 months it's not a major project that you're working on uh, the nature of project continuously changes depending on the agenda that uh, the firm has right uh, so there are two agendas that you might have one is where basically you're catering to the longer term road map that um, the fintech strategy agenda uh, formula has been formulated right Uh, and that might be a longer engagement of couple of weeks maybe where you are focusing on a particular focus area um so for instance um it is a role where you are covering a lot of breadth uh, to give you a flavor of the same so far as part of my ps2 i have covered uh, wealth management alternative investments esg or climate investing um digital assets crypto assets and the likes of that right so you'd be working across these different spheres uh, for a couple of weeks and doing your work on those parts um the second agenda is basically more ad hoc which might come in from a particular team where they might require your help in conducting deep dive research right uh, similar to what park mentioned previously um these can be like and these are more urgent or on an urgent basis right? so you might receive a request on a monday afternoon and might need to turn it in by wednesday morning right um and this these can be like company deep dives that they might require or like a very quick scan of the industry or fundraising activity around this particular sector um so those are the kinds of ad hoc requests that might be there um coming to the team structuring um hierarchy and working culture uh, fintech is a very lean team um there are very few people in the team so um with along with the interns there are only six uh, members in the team every semester fintech takes two interns across the three campuses um and this also varies across roles right so wholesale strategy takes one if i'm not wrong global markets because as rishabh mentioned there are a lot more roles right there it's very specific in terms of a particular um, asset class that you're looking at as well as a particular um, geography probably that you're looking at so that's why there are multiple roles over there and similar uh, in similar fashion you might find roles across global risk as well um but having said that there is definitely um, although there is a chain of command there is a lot of flat hierarchy um you do uh, you are responsible for your independent projects because it's a lean team you have more responsibility right uh, you're not like work is not shouldered off to you as such um also a lot of flexibility is definitely placed on the interns area of interest um you can if you are interested in the tech side of things you can like explore that also uh, the manager is very flexible in that regard uh, so my co intern had a tech profile and he um, did focus on both business uh, projects as well as um, core tech projects right so you do have that flexibility in case you want that having said that there might be certain uh, times when there might be ad hoc requests where you actually need to work on certain things which you are not really aware of so they do expect that you come with an open mind and are able to learn on the job um so that is about the team structuring work culture but getting to ppo prospects uh, to be honest unfortunately it's very variable uh, you can't really predict um one good thing is that nomura is not on a hiring freeze and they definitely are opening so at least on a macro level right? um you should probably talk to people who have gone through that role to understand what exactly are the chances um another thing as rishabh mentioned is that um, like nomura does allow uh, i heard this from other interns so nomura does allow you to uh, shift to other teams basis interviews right so in case you've done your, if you've done good work right you might be able, and there's not an opening in your team you might be able to shift to another role uh, but at the same time i would probably recommend that if your ppo is on is on your agenda you should pro probably try to um explore a role where you want to end up uh, working right because if you want to shift there are a, there are a couple of steps uh, additional steps that are involved right first you need to do really good work and your manager needs to recommend you right um second the team that you want to um, work with should have an opening and then finally you won't get a ppo directly you need to go through a set of interview process because you're shifting teams so that that is something that you should keep in mind uh, however having said that i think ppo prospects are like not bad it's not that it's on a hiring freeze so you won't get a ppo as such uh, but it's it is variable there are multiple levers that are in the play
um coming to compensation i think like i, I don't think it's something that you definitely need to worry about although i can't uh, reveal official numbers as such or a range also um it is above industry average so shouldn't be a, a lot of concern um for at least a fintech role um the two primary um software that you need to know is excel and powerpoint and you need to be very heavily uh, involved in these two right especially powerpoint um i why i say that is because you like you need to be prepared to make lots and lots of decks right um as part of fintech as well as wholesale strategy uh, just like any other consulting or strategy role you are basically um assisting the senior management in like making better decisions right or um providing them with insights and more often than not that's going to be in the form of a deck only so you will be making lots and lots of uh, presentations or decks which can be consumed directly by them um if you obviously venture into the tech side of things like my co intern did then um you would be using javascript or python that's what i've seen uh, the firm use more or less some amount of java maybe but primarily it's uh, js or python um in terms of prerequisites or like can do i don't think there are any major limitations as such uh, but this role like almost all finance roles i think that you might get out of ps are very research heavy roles uh, because at the end of the day you need to analyze and evaluate companies and industry and the market uh, by considering public data or uh, that might be readily available or by accessing certain databases right so there's a lot of secondary primary research involved and you need to be able to do conduct good quality research um since it's a hybrid role they definitely do prefer or are liking like they like if they if you have some kind of entrepreneurial experience or experience in the financial services setting um so if you do have that do like highlight that out um and once you obviously if you get through uh, fintech as a role then you can start off like to get a edge you can read about fintech trends startups accelerator programs etc and keep your ears closer to the ground right so that you are able to track innovation and fintech as it happens and finally um to try to evaluate whether this role is for you right? i wouldn't try to highlight what are pros and cons of this particular role uh, because a pro for me might be a con for someone else right so ideally what i try to do is uh, help you ascertain whether this might be a right fit for you right? so who might this be a right fit for right? so in case if you are someone who likes to cover breadth um, and intellectual curiosity is what drives you then definitely this is a role, a role worth exploring because as i said you will be you won't be working on one particular thing you'll be covering different areas within the broader financial services umbrella right um and within that then you will be basically covering a lot of breadth and being a jack of all trades um rather than you know covering a lot of depth uh, per se um if you're not really sure of whether you want to get into core finance it's a definitely a good hybrid role between finance strategy and entrepreneurship right so you'll get a flavor of all three uh, industries in some way or fashion um uh, if you're interested in startups and the fintech industry then it's a no brainer it's definitely worth considering and as i said it's not it's not an iterative task that you might have right? so it's not uh, anything to do with automation or reporting uh, that kind of work won't be uh, involved in this role so those are certain aspects that you can consider however if you're looking for like depth of knowledge you want to like as opposed to breadth right you want to cover like a particular niche deep down vertically in then probably um, this might not like suit your needs so to say um and if you are looking to get exposure into core finance or want to stay on the market side of thing then probably roles like the global markets would be a better bet right which is more traditional towards finance as opposed to fintech or wholesale strategy um another thing is that like uh, a confusion that some of the, some of some of the people have uh, raised when they reached out to me was uh, a7 people who were um, thinking that fintech is a like a very hybrid role where they can earn a lot of money and as well at the point of time Uh, do coding and be involved in the financial services industry that's not the case um the role is not pertaining a lot around fintech coding as such um you might be wanting to check out other roles uh, which might serve your needs such as morgan stanley or amex which are particularly in the field of data science or quant modeling right so to say and finally this is not a very traditional role uh, because fintech is an emerging uh, play right so if um you really want to look at a very traditional role then there are certain other options also that are available to you um finally coming to the tips uh, that i that i think worked out for me right firstly i know that obviously a lot of you um i think deadline is tomorrow day after or so so you have already um more or less figured out what exactly you want to do but try to evaluate consciously when you are uh, placing your options right uh, in terms of priority 
okay, what exactly you're seeking out of PS, right? Some people might be seeking exposure to finance. Some people are like hell bent that I want to do this particular role, and others might be that just looking for a brand name which might help in your placements or might get a PPO um, at the end of six months, right? Which is also a fair ask. Um, and on the basis of these three, basically you should uh, evaluate where, where where exactly you want to go. Uh, another tip would be that probably speak to a lot of people uh, to get uh, the role specific insights. Do not directly go by what is mentioned in the JD. Right, I've seen in some cases um, the work is uh, a little contrasting to what is exactly mentioned, and your expectations might not be met. Best way is to, if you have a shred of doubt, talk to seniors, understand the softer nuances of the. Role. And the third, and I think of underrated one uh, probably is that fill the bio data properly. Uh, the agenda behind that is simple. Uh, like, why would you want to give PSD a chance to not allot you a particular station? Just because you did not provide them with the required information, right? So um, I would say go ahead and fill it very diligently. Um, try to understand what exactly are those roles. If you read through the JD, you will understand what exactly are these roles expecting out of you, and try to see if you have experience within uh, those expectations, right? And then definitely highlight that. So inst if, for instance, if you're looking at software and you've looked at Excel, um, highlight that you know Excel. I would say go a step further. Highlight the functions also that you know within Excel, right? In the brackets, uh, be it pivot or VLOOKUP, etc. Similarly, if you know a few libraries in Python, highlight those. Um, if you've done projects or internships which might fit to the profile, definitely do highlight those. So fill the basically the long story short is fill the bio data um, diligently so that like you don't have anything to lose, right? And you have a lot to gain by doing things the right way. Um, so do your part and then let PSD do its part. Probably. So I think that is about it from Nomura or FinTech perspective. If there are any questions, would be happy to take them. Uh, thank you, Bayer. Uh, your insights into uh, Nomura were definitely invaluable, and your presentation was amazing. Uh, I think we can now move on to the second part of the uh, event, where we take on the questions from the audience. So we have a few questions which have been mailed to the audience and uh, a few questions in the YouTube live stream. So we'll be taking them up. Um, so for the first question, we have uh, for various uh, finance roles, especially JPMC and JPMS, the specific team descriptions are given instead of the role description. How to choose a particular role or team then? What factors to take into account to give the preference order when the project description given is so general? So uh, anyone could uh, take this up and answer it, and we can perhaps go in a certain order. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead with this. So, uh, like, if you're not sure about what what uh, what the like after even after reading the JD, you're not sure about what the role is exactly. Like, go ahead and like reach out to people who are already there. So they will be like as Rahul mentioned that that will be able to uh, get your better exposure of what exactly the work is. Like it might be that JD uh, doesn't, uh, not only that it, it will be a brief exposure from JD, but it will also be that uh, you get some like very drastically different work that, that is mentioned there. So reach out to people and like that will help you to get a better knowledge about how to choose your peer stations. That is, that is from my side. Yeah, agree with Rishad. This is the most uh, sound advice uh, that's for uh, choosing the PS station uh, currently. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, are there, so Rabia, is there any other insights you would like to add? Aditya, we can, uh, like, these are generic questions. Uh, we can like skip them and move to those specific questions which people have asked because I guess they'll be able to able to answer those specific questions very well. Ye kafi general you can move ahead. All right. Um, so our next question is uh, at JPMS, uh, should we prefer consumer banking roles over risk groups? I'll take this up. Uh, so basically, there is no, nothing that is uh, like uh, as a short, short answer to this. If you are interested in the consumer banking business, the lending, home loans, auto loans, card risk, and all those things, you should definitely go for something in the consumer banking uh, division. 
risk roles uh, are majorly that come into uh, our ps2 forms are basically the investment under the investment banking lob the corporate and investment banking so if this is something that fits into your greater profile because many of the people are aiming for a ppo from ps so it's up to you it's no for nobody to decide or tell like what is the role that should be preferred a general understanding between the people is they i think they prefer uh, a little bit towards the risk roles but it's totally on the uh, person that is going like what does he thinks he would be a good fit for yeah i uh, i like to add on that uh, that ccb is basically chase right so it's chase consumer banking so it's more from the bank perspective rather than investment bank perspective if i can say that so uh, like that uh, auto loans or uh, like whatever daksh mentioned that there are very many verticals there so that is more from the banking perspective rather than the investment banking perspective so that's something that i like to add here uh, adding one point to that if you are looking within jp morgan like look carefully which line of business it is if cib is listed uh, in your job description it is part of the investment bank cib stands for corporate and investment bank if it's ccb it's the consumer bank the chase bank So if you have a role, if CIB is listed, all the functions will be relating to the investment side of the firm. If CCB, then it's the retail side. So look carefully on the designation. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, what is the difference between JPMS and JPMC, and how does JPMS compare to other stations like CS, Namura, etc.? i think there is no such difference it's just that jp ms is jp morgan securities and it's that jp morgan and chase uh jp morgan chase is like a entity umbrella entity and jp ms comes under it so i don't think so there is any like difference as such from the internship perspective that will be there um adding to that uh, jp ms in india can stand for jp morgan services for example uh, a lot of the uh, so they are separate legal entities because they provide separate services so for example you can have uh, like uh, jp morgan is a huge bank uh, jp morgan chase is the entire umbrella entity which has jp morgan as the investment bank and the chase as the consumer bank it they sort of merged in 2000 so that's why they are separate lines of businesses so they have a lot of different legal entities which provide different services so jp morgan services provides the investment banking side of the firm JPMC can uh, uh, is a lot of the times it can be the uh, the consumer side, but then again it can't. It's not hard and it's not a hard and fast rule. Look carefully at what the job description entails. But it's just one form. It's just JPMC is the overall umbrella form. So there's no difference. Yeah. Uh, to add to that, like uh, it's only because that in in India you can find India all the offices are JP JP Morgan Services because Chase doesn't exist out of India. Chase is out of US and might be some other location as well. I'm not sure about that. But Chase is not present in India. So even if you are at CCB, I think you must be most likely working with clients that are based out of US or like North America somewhere. So that that's the only reason. Like there's no work related difference. Just difference based out of the location where you're based to. Uh, thank you for the uh, answers. uh the next question one, one part you had mentioned the jpms versus namura versus the others so that yes. is extremely subjective if you are for example that is extremely subjective if you are look if you have a better role in let's say namura versus jp morgan for example if in your perspective you are getting a better role at namura versus jp morgan and if you are very satisfied with it then don't bother for example these are all very big banks like if you are applying if you have let's say a ps if you have a very good role at let's say namura no one is going to reject you because you are at namura that's like it doesn't matter that much for example jp might be a bigger bank but it doesn't mean that no one is going to reject you for no more if for example but it's totally uh, like don't go by that if you're getting just look at better role what suits you better what you think you would work better at. think on that those lines yeah um, i think i'd like to emphasize on the role bit because um, a lot of i've seen like we've all been there um we are all in that position where like we just want a finance ps or a you know bank as a hedge uh, so to say um and we are like kitty care any role would work for us but um, at the end of the day you have to spend 6 months on that and potentially after that also right as a career option um, so i would like to emphasize that role definitely does matter a lot 
um so if i would have been in that place i would have probably gone for a better fit for a role perspective um which aligns with let's say my career interests or the kind of work that i want to do um right? and then i think um, there will be subtle differences between organizations there won't be major differences yeah uh, adding to that like when i had to i just add one point from my personal experience that in my first semester i had the similar situation like uh, so there i uh, like i was allotted nomura global markets because uh, like i i i found that profile was more aligned at that point in time that i wanted to do something core finance and that's why like i put it in that order in my preference list so jp morgan nomura both are very big investment banks like like you are a fresher it doesn't matter for you because it's a those two like you won't be able to compare those two because you are just starting your career so any any of those are fine just look at the job description look at the vertical look at uh, what you'll be doing is core finance or it's uh, more or more of the management side or like whatever like whatever the uh, branch will be so look from that perspective rather than like looking just from the brand perspective right uh, so the next question is uh now we this is uh, specifically for you so could you please explain a little more about the cmt profile the cmt profile mm -hmm. um so um, i mean i i'm not an expert in cmt because i not worked at it so like for subtle nuances definitely reach out there are bits in certain cmt but um, there are a lot of projects that are internally ongoing right and you need a a, a management team that would look after those projects right um, ensuring that let's say if there is a particular technology adoption that's happening right you have to see that from start to finish right and then there are certain processes that are followed um how, and then the cmt team was basically responsible so cmt stands for change management team right um so if there's any particular um function where you're, there's a particular change or you're adopting something or there's a process that's going on um you need to like overlook the entire process uh, from end to end so you might have to interact with multiple stakeholders who are a part of that particular um, project right um ensure exactly what exactly are the requirements how what is the best way and the most efficient way in which you can proceed with the project are there any risks associated with that particular process or project right and then try to mitigate those risks so essentially it's a lot to do with internal things um, from that's from my knowledge so far um but having said that i uh, would definitely suggest that you reach out to someone who's gone through the cmt internship right so they would be able to provide more Or nuanced view, or more nuanced view. Yeah, uh, like I think I'll I can answer to some point because my role is uh, like kind of somewhat related to change management. So it's uh, like uh, in change management, basically uh, my my role is process strategy in J P Morgan, and change management is like you can say part of a, kind of a counterpart there in Nomura. So uh, like change management, basically in Nomura, they focus on execution of projects and like. whatever uh, transformation projects that i will mention like are there any digital transformation projects or any credit transformation projects so they oversee all the projects so my team is basically like within my team there are several different teams some are based on strategy like creating strategy for the pro those projects some are for execution of those projects so the change management is most likely uh, like most uh, related to the execution of those projects that are there for like making the bank more competitive on for nomura basically Uh, thank you for the answer uh, our next question is uh, how um, what metrics would you consider if you have to take a call between global research and global bank and banking i think this is jp morgan right? yeah i think part of the yeah you might be able to get a question which two roles that you mentioned global research and uh global research and banking global research and banking are two very different lines of businesses for example uh, any uh, global they share some part of the work that they do for example global research can deal with the equity research side of the segment so global research basically generates investment research so investment research can range from a lot of things they, they can uh, uh, so investment research is something jp morgan provides to its client for uh, to sort of assist in their investment decisions uh cib does similar work but for example your investment but it's more bespoke for us for cib for example we provide transaction advisory 
so for example if you're going on a deal for example then uh, then for example you would approach a banking side if you for example if you if a hedge fund wants to buy a stock or something you would approach global research now there are different things that has have to be kept in mind for example global research will have branch restrictions and uh, there are a few other uh, so work would be so in terms of branch restrictions as far as i know equity research in india requires a masters degree there's some severe restrictions so you would have to keep that in mind you can't get up even if you get somehow by hook or crook get an equity research role you won't get a ppo if because you don't have a masters degree so there's some severe regulation regard behind that so you have to keep such things in mind so uh, uh so apart from that in terms of work as if I'm, if i'm not wrong global research is a front office is a front office uh, job right uh can anyone confirm in jpm no no, no. J, uh, go, uh, this is not a front office okay. in india it's like support or back you i don't know what exact term yeah yeah could be yeah. middle i don't know exactly but it's not a front office role could be some support role or something yeah it's sorry, support for the front office it's not definitely not front office i'm not sure middle or like middle or uh, what but it's not front office role so if it's uh, so in that terms your crg work It's, it's innocent banking will be far more notorious. I can guarantee you that it's far more. It will be far more longer working hours in any case. I mean, there's nothing within JP Morgan that can be innocent banking hours. There's no, nothing going to be done. But uh, there can be subtle differences, as I mentioned. Your investment research will provide different sort of products to other customers, while your CIB will cater to other customers. Now you'll have to rely on the job description for that, and you'll have to speak to seniors to get the exact details. For example, I haven't worked in investment research, so I can't give you. an exact commentary on that but the entire thing is it will they were basically providing different products to different set of customers that's the basic gist of it the difference between a banking cib banking and a investment research side so like it just depends on what your preferences are if you are excited with stocks or uh, uh, like equity you want to uh, go into deep into some when i want to analyze the metrics it's a role for you if you want or uh, like you, if you are interested in the investment core investment banking activities like raising debt how to raise underwriting or mna or e equity capital markets or just sector research the banking is the role for you uh, as parth mentioned like the banking role is a quite a heavy role it has a toll uh so if you don't like that role i don't think so you will be able to continue over there just don't go by the fact that he mentioned like it has a 100% ppo near about 100% conversion don't go thinking like there is 100% so i'll go i'll also fetch that that is like i want just wanted to convey this uh so nobody doesn't make a like a uh, inform like using this information make some decision that they would regret Yes, adding to that, the hundred percent, like I, uh, I pointed out to mention that usually the invest the PPO chances are great. I, uh, so the this time it was hundred percent, but there have been times when no one was given a PPO. So it totally depends on economic scenario. For example, like there was a semester I believe in which nobody got a PPO out of ten or eleven people who were there. So the the conversion rate can be that bad. It totally depends on upon economic scenario. Right now, because there are a few investment changes in US, there is a lot of pressure going on in front offices to reduce workload. so that's why middle offices seeing a lot of action that they're sort of shifting work from front offices to middle offices to sort of reduce the burden so that's why right now uh, the crg side of, is experiencing greater well let's say recruiting but this is not a very it's sort of a one time move for now sort of a small change this, this may not be permanent so don't rely on this as a guarantee for ppo chances so apart from that is semester 1 semester 2 chances can vary because crg likes people continuing immediately yeah and uh, in for global research i can say that then i think there are around 14 15 people that they took in first semester last year so there are a lot of vacancies there for internship and even conversion is i think good there like conversion is conversion rate has been good in the past year so like if you are interested in the role as like parth and daksh mentioned if you are interested in that kind of a role it's a good opportunity because there are a lot of uh, internships there and uh, conversion is also good and for global research you have to be there for both the semesters to be eligible for a conversion all right uh, thank you for your answer for this question uh, moving on um, is jpms global research role better than nomura global markets role 
how would you compare and contrast uh, the two books? I think I can I take a jab at it, but I don't like think this is a very good question to ask. But uh, mm -hmm. like these are they're very very different roles. Like markets role is very different from research role, as you can say. Like markets is more of uh, like the, the teams that are in global markets are uh, trading trading roles. Then there are uh, structuring teams, there are sales team, there is like uh, fonts team. Like there are many many different things that are directly related to the different markets. Like maybe there are like uh, north america market or emia market or like asia market so like the teams there are like more uh, depend on core finance and uh, uh, core finance in those specific markets even in global research uh, teams are based out of different regions that like you may be uh, working with a malaysia team or a korea team or maybe a us team so that is very uh, like dynamic depends upon where you are allotted so that is reason region wise, but global markets uh, is like you, you won't be able to compare that with research. That research is also a finance heavy role. Markets also a finance heavy role, but markets is a more hands on role than global global research that I can comment with. Uh, great. Uh, thank you for that answer. Um, I believe that is. Uh, about all of the questions which we have for today. Uh, so before we end the session, would you have any generic uh, pieces of advice for all the students who are filling out the PS2 preferences uh, this time? Um, I think um, a couple of points. Right? Um, first and foremost, um, there are multiple factors that you might consider right, while choosing a PS. Um, but it is very important to understand what exactly are you expecting out of the PS. Right. Um, so first, evaluate those things. Um, second is like place more emphasis on role uh, than what you would either think of right earlier. Um, that does matter, and this is not just for finance, right? Um, even across, if you're looking at other roles in like non-core in general, at startups uh, or other like more established companies like Swiggy, right? Um, try to understand what exactly are those nuances because at the end of the day, um, you definitely should know what you like what you want to do. But you should also know the parts of the job that you might not like, right? Before you go into it, um, so you need to be aware of both sides of the story, right? Because um, that would help you make a more informed choice. Um, and I think, like, uh, don't at the end of the day, don't try to like chase some particular like role or chase some particular branch. If there's something that you might enjoy doing, probably pursue that. Um, if at the end of the day, that will end up playing well. And try to talk to um, like you might have do not not have a lot of time, but try to talk to seniors and understand those softer nuances which um, are not going to be mentioned in the job description. Right? So I think it would be from my side. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for turning up, Mayank. I guess we can um, switch off the live.